Hi, I'm Mark Orbeck. I'm the Vice President of Engineering at Lenaro. And uh, I, we actually have several teams. Uh, we have working groups that are uh, the main focus. We have four or five of them, actually. Security, tool chain, uh, kernel, power management, and uh, we also have engineering teams which are focused around Android and virtualization. And then we have the segment groups. These are the groups that are focused on specific verticals. Uh, we have two today and a third that's starting uh, later this year. The two that are already in place are LEG, the enterprise group. They're focused on enterprise servers. And we have um, the uh, networking group, which is focused on high performance, high bandwidth networking. Uh, and then the, the one later this year will be focused around digital home, uh, television, set-top boxes, etc. So we have a couple people here from uh, the tech leads for, from Lenaro, uh, one from the kernel working group and the other from the security working group, and uh, have a conversation with them to see what they're working on and where they're headed in 2014. Is that good? So why don't we uh, introduce each other? So Joachim, tell us what you do. Yeah, my name is Joachim. I'm the tech lead of security working group and trying to coordinate both in terms of uh, the, the staff I have in the team and uh, the plans that we have for the coming year, mostly from right now to the next Connect. And uh, yeah, we, we, the current work we are doing is uh, we are laying out the gr groundwork for a T solution, an open source T solution. And when we have that in place, we are going to add the features. And to start with, it, we're looking at DRM and uh, Secure Boot. So what's the specific reason for the trusted execution environment? What's the, what's the value in uh, for the Lenaro members? The value is that I will get a fairly complete reference design that they can start to build on, use to building their own products if they want to. And it's tested, it's, been, it's actually been out in products in the past since it's based on a proprietary solution that is going to become an open source solution now. And what are the, what are the, what, what are this, uh, what is the TE used for in, in a typical environment such as a digital home network? Yeah, TE is where you, in, in the digital home network it's DRM and when you get content from a delivery network you need to start with decrypting the content and you should do that in a safe environment and by doing it in a T you can have hardware support protecting the buffers that you are decoding and you have to give them to someone else with, which take care of doing the rendering and decoding in a secure manner also. So why open source versus proprietary TE? Yeah, Lenore is only doing open source so <laughs> that's a clear answer at least but uh, you can also look back at the year that has been now with revelations from different parts of the world and, and people are really looking into open source right now and there's a re really no reason for hiding stuff when it comes to security since you can protect it by keys. Safe boots, trusted boots and keys. Okay. So why don't we switch gears over to Deepak Saxena and uh, Deepak's uh, tech lead for the kernel working group. Deepak, why don't you introduce yourself and talk about what you're doing in 2014 in the group. Hello, so uh, I'm Deepak Saxena, I lead the Kernel Working Group in Arrow. And uh, this year we've got a couple of focuses, uh, and there's basically three main areas that our team focuses on. Uh, ARMv8 kernels, ARM32 kernels, and Android upstreaming. And our major you know, focus that I think people are the most excited about and that we spent the most time discussing here was ARMv8. Uh, the last couple of months we've been focusing on getting ARMv8 debug technology up and running. So there's things like F-Trace and K-Probes and U-Probes, uh, Audit, SecConf, and a bunch of things that are used primarily when you're sort of trying to figure out what's wrong with the system, which is a useful tool to have, useful set of tools to have when you start developing sort of higher level applications, which is what we're going to start seeing. We're going to start seeing people porting existing applications on other architectures over to ARM. And so over the next couple of months, we're going to be working on getting all of those things upstreamed and then also um, start uh, hopefully helping our hardware vendors, our hardware vendor members on getting their ARMv8 SOC ports upstream by providing early review and guidance to them. And so uh, in the past Lenaro has been, uh, had worked on defragmentation in the V7 mm -hmm. uh, space. How do we, 
plan ahead to look to prevent that fragmentation in, in the V8 space. So in the V8 space, what, what we plan to do is, you know, we have some very strict guidelines upstream. So Lenara worked very closely with the, with the upstream community in developing guidelines for ARM32, and we're going to be basically using the same guidelines in ARM V8. So when, you know, the 32-bit ARM architecture went into Linux, there weren't any guidelines for anyone to follow. It was like, well, I've got an ARM32 processor, I'm going to get supported. So we have strict guidelines So in terms of what will go upstream. Now the challenge is that if people develop code in-house and those they don't meet those guidelines, that it'll get into products out there and then we'll end up with sort of the same fragmented uh, environment, but instead of all being fragmentation of string will have it even be worse where it's fragmentation but all in like sort of a bunch of different trees. So what we want to do is work really closely with uh, our members who are SOC vendors who are doing uh, SOC bring up for ARMv8 and basically providing some guidance to them and you know uh, on their code that they may not be quite ready to, to uh, post upstream but we can at least like review and sort of say it's going the right direction or it's not going the right direction here's the easy to fix so that we can end up with a single consolidated kernel tree. So this year, again, is a key focus for ARMv8. So what is the, uh, what, what's really needed to be done this year uh, in, the v, in the kernel in order to prepare for, the, the, well, there's existing hardware now, but there's, there's more coming, a lot more coming right. later this year. Right. So what's needed to be so, done? You know, so uh, from, our, you know, from, from my, my team, as I said, debug tools, because that's, a, that's pretty much a requirement for all the enterprise class distros to be able to have these tools to help them develop the applications, help their customers develop applications. Um, we need to get virtualization completely up and running, and you know that's another team in the that's working on that with the upstream community. And then we need to sort of figure out the whole boot architecture uh, conversation. You know, getting ACPI upstreamed into the kernel, and figuring out how to solve some of the issues that are still there in the ACPI implementation. Good. Yeah. All right. Oh, do you want me to say more? Um, I, I think just summarize it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think in general, uh, in Lenaro this year, as we've been talking about, ARMv8 is very key. ARMv7 work continues is very important. We're going to make sure that continues in, uh, in all of the areas. But V8 is really a focus area. We have a lot of new hardware coming on board uh, from our membership. We want to make sure that hardware is enabled. Uh, we have some technology, key technology areas that our members depend on. One of those is the tool chain itself. And uh, we have people that need the leading edge. Uh, which will be soon coming, the 4.9 GCC version, which should be out in the next couple of months. Uh, and having that be available and stable for V8 is very important. Uh, we have this Lenaro stable kernel, which we started uh, in the last year. And that has V8 support today based on models. Uh, we need to make sure that the member platforms are going to be enabled in it, as well as some features that are still uh, in upstream kernels that need to be backported into the 3.10 LSK base in order to make sure that uh, our members can use that as a basis for their product designs.